Hey, this is a really fun video because what I'm going to do today is teach you guys all of the worst mistakes I made in this game. That's right. I'm going to show you how much I've spent as well as, I mean, it's over a thousand dollars, right? As well as the mistakes I made both when spending money as well as just playing the game. So if you're either new to the game or veteran, you're going to learn uh, either some funny mistakes I made or things not to do from the mistakes that I made. So I love y'all. Hopefully this video is enjoyable. Please go ahead and leave a like at the beginning to help me out and spread the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. All right, we're back with another day of Guardian Tales and what we're gonna be doing today right off the bat is go ahead and opening some of these summons. So let's get that done. But I like to do the daily discount ones first. And what we're gonna try to be doing is get the new eight held fox nari or however you say it. Eight fox-tailed Nari, eight-tailed fox Nari, I don't know. I think people were kind of sleeping on her. I've been seeing her in arena, I've played against her in arena and against her in Coliseum. She's kind of strong, so it'd be nice to get some of that. Plus, I've been worried about who I'm gonna focus on um, limit breaking, because what I've realized is these hero crystals we get, right? We don't really wanna use these on the evolution stones, but we want to do is we want to try to use these limit breaks. So there's the limit breaks in the game, which you can go, you know, level higher and all that jazz. And I'm realizing I need to limit break the characters all the way up to 68. And it gets more and more expensive as time goes on. Would you look at this? Look at this. I again got these characters, 17 more, but now we're up to 550, but 1200 left. And we still don't have the character. That's a major feels bad, man. All right. But we're going to do, we're going to do two more of these. We we'll take a shot at it. Two more poles here. See if we can get lucky in those. Ooh, two star in that box. Come on now. What can we get here? Oh, come on. All right, any more of those? Well, yeah, we'll call it for that one for the eight fox-tailed Inari. So I've spent $1,000 in this game, and what I want to do is I want to show you what $1,000 inventory looks like in Guardian's Tell and kind of tell you the mistakes I've made as well as the, the correct purchases. So if you want to look at the heroes, we'll go to the hero list here, and you can see I basically have every hero in the game except two heroes. I have pulled a bunch of times on Foxtail. I've just got unlucky. I do believe that I probably should have pulled her by now, but we're missing... Captain Ido Eva, right? And we're missing the, the eight fox-tailed Nari. Besides that, you can see here, I've got all the characters in the game. Now, when it comes to weapons for this price range, you see I only got 41% because the thing with the weapons is not only do you need the weapon, but you need the weapon evolved. You have to evolve all of these weapons as well. And once you collect all of them, you get more and more knowledge ranks, etc. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this in the beginning. So I crunched all my weapons. And as I pull more weapons, um, from the boxes, I'll slowly achieve this and I'll do more random evolutions and etc. You like my hair by the way? It's super crazy. I just woke up. Also not wearing pants, but that's the brilliant side of having a camera. Now, if you look here, these are what I have kept so far. I have a lot of the unique weapons. I have a level 65 of this. I pulled this weapon a few times, 64 of the Armada. I did pull the Armada a couple of times. I've got a couple of plilt vices here that I can upgrade. I've got the Genocide. I've got May Rill. I have the Pure Mind. Basically, I have the EX weapon for most of the characters, but I'm still missing the EX weapon for a lot of the good ones. You can see here, I've, you know, I have like Karina's weapon and you know the, the Knight's weapon, Aspiring Craig, and a few other here as well. So I do have a fairly decent collection. One thing I'm gonna notice and mention here is that accessories are something you wanna keep an eye on. When you're welling out in the beginning or as you're collecting stuff, even without welling out over time, Make sure that you keep more of the items than you would think. I know you can do the random evolution and crunch them up for the small ones, um, but make sure that you do try to actually complete your inventory as you go through. If you didn't know, when you look at your inventory here, or I should say the book here, for collecting the different items, you know, you get gems, but you also get your knowledge rank, right? And as the knowledge rank goes up, you get better and better and better bonus stats. And this is across all your characters. So this is highly important. You can see here, instead of crunching this three star shield, what I should have done is made it a four star then five star, same thing with this. And this would have unlocked all of these for me as well. But easily the hardest thing for me to get right now is accessories. If you look a thousand dollars in and I still haven't pulled a singular five star accessory or anything really good. At this point, I'm not even sure if you can pull these. Um, Maybe you have to only get these from the rifts and from the stores, but basically accessories is what it boils down to that I haven't really got very much of it all. And you definitely, I, I think I actually crunched a lot of the good ones like this one and the Ring of Heats and stuff back when I didn't know what I was doing. So if you want to take it from a Wells advice or from somebody that has had a good amount of these items in the game, don't crunch them. I made that mistake early on and now I'm having to go back and recollect them. 
if you look at my actual heroes, you're gonna notice I have a five star Maria, five star Tina, uh, but I actually don't have a very lot of five star characters. Uh, I have a few, you know, a couple of them here, but that's really kind of where it stops. After that, you see a few four stars here as I've picked up from the events and the rest is kind of three star unleveled. It takes a ton of resources to get a character maxed out. Like if you look here, this character has a 65 bowl. I've welled out for this character. I haven't limit broke. I still have my, my, uh, you know, these items, whatever the crystals is what they're called here. But if you look at the awakening, this is really where it's, it's a problem. The awakening takes so much. It takes so much to complete that in order to get all of this done, you need tons of, of gold. I mean, millions of gold in order to complete this per character. And for that reason, it can take a really, really long time to finish these characters. I mean, I even have characters here like Marina, that, you know, amazing characters and all that, very far done, but still I have in huge things like the party HP increase, all these bonus stats still to complete. You know, in this character is 63, five star, I got more party HP, I got to finish there. And it's just, I'm waiting on the gold. And for that reason, what I would say, uh, as somebody who welled out, cause I wanted to collect the characters and the, and the weapons, and I'm a collector, not really like a hardcore gamer for the people that watch me, you know that. And the reason I, I weld out and all this, because I want to have fun, I want all the characters, I want to test Eugene, I want to test Bari and all that. But what I'm learning as I do that is the unfortunate fact is like any other Gasha, you really want to focus down and try to max out the best character you get first because the awakenings take so long again the five star takes so long when you go in to do these riffs and you're like i'm going to go in here let me acquire the skill one right let's say what i want to work on is i want to work on my uh this character here the flower bar right i've got 190 shards i've been farming so far so i go to the auto repeat go do the auto repeat put it on seven here and then i just sit and wait right for the stones but what I've noticed is in order to clear these higher tiers, it only really became available to me to be able to clear once I got a certain character high enough. For me, it was Annabelle does really a large portion of my damage. And you can see here Tina, for instance. But if I had continued to spread my Awakening Stones or spread my Evolution Stones that I got from, you know, the Crystal Duplicates or whatever, then my characters are going to continue to be weak. So really the go-to... Uh, strategy here is from the beginning make sure whatever best character you get your hands on you focus on first that way you can use that character then to go through and auto farm all these dungeons to get stones and all that for the other characters that's kind of the other thing is i made the mistake of using most of my crystals to buy evolution stones and even though that helped early on if you're going to do that i would only really do that for one character like if you pull marina or, you know, Dragon Avatar or the new Fox chick or some, you know, fairly decent chick and you want to all in on that chick, put everything only into that character, max her out and then use her as your primary character to help carry you through some of these dungeons. Because if you look here, even though Annabelle uh, or Arabelle typically does way more, way more damage than my Tina here, even though she's four star compared to the five star in most of these dungeons, right now, if you look at the DPS, even Marina, Bari, 300, 200, it's your main character you're using on some of these dungeons, like the skill weapon dungeons or the solo only dungeons, that you really need a singular character very strong. And for that reason, don't spread out your resources, or it's going to be like me here, where you're trying to beat through some of these stages and even though you've spent a thousand dollars you will not be able to auto through the last stages and you may say that you well that's good you can't pay the win straight to the end of the game fair point but also keep in mind if i had paid the win correctly from the beginning i probably could have here's some advice for pvp when you set up your characters and you switch the positions of your characters right like you want to set up the position here but then you switch the position of which character is first in here, it's gonna change the corresponding position. So if I go here and let's say I put Annabelle bomb left corner, okay? So we're like, okay, confirm the position settings. Now, if I go in here and I switch Annabelle here, I'm like, okay, I like that. I go back to party settings and I look at the position. Now, Bari is in the bottom left corner. So for, for this reason, you have to make sure you understand where your character is gonna be in the Coliseum when you're setting up your defensive positions. And when you swap your characters, your, your defensive positions are gonna be swapped too. If you want these two to be in the front and then you go to play as a different character, that changes that too, even on your defense. So be careful. And keep in mind with Arena, sometimes it's more about synergy or smart use of teams. Look at this one, okay? He's got two commons here. Let's just try this team. The best characters in the game may be the best, but they're not always the best in Coliseum. 
From what I've seen, the new Foxtail character is pretty good in Coliseum, but I've also lost the people running just rares. I mean, you're looking here, we're currently losing this battle, and it has to do a lot with what they focused on primarily. If you look here, he has a level 64 and a level 65 character, which are both the commons, and they're kind of kicking ass. I mean, they're the last two people alive right here. Did you see that? It just did 50,000 AoE damage and basically one-shot everybody. For that reason, it kind of proves two things with the Coliseum. One is you can get more point, you know, more gems and all that by climbing the Coliseum just by having certain characters that you max out first instead of going wide, as well as the Coliseum is kind of more about synergy. So if you have a lot of like, uh, let's say characters that are all dark based, right? Like I'm building my dark team with Arabelle and Lupina and Karina, and you build teams that are all synergized with their stats and all that. You know, I'll give you an example, right? Let me show you the team I'm working on here. So what I'm working on is I'm gonna build uh, Arabelle, who is dark, right? It's a dark based damage. I'm gonna put in Lupina, who is also dark based as well. Will give us bonus crit chance, which this crit chance was stacked with uh, Arabelle's. And then I'm gonna put in Karina here, who is dark based as well. Vampire Bat, which will heal us based upon the basic attack from the dark as well. And then the fourth spot, I'm either just going to put in Marina as a tank, or I'm thinking about adding in like an additional healer. There's a few ideas I have using some of the other rares, so you like Aspiring Craig, for instance, can be quite interesting. So there's a few other ways you can build teams as well. So don't be afraid to go all in on one strategy. For instance, a new dragon avatar with the new firebase characters, AKA look at what you have, build around what you have. If we're talking about like pay the win so much, let's talk about these deals. I buy the 30 day ones just because awakening stones are hard to get a hold of and it's the best gym value. Also, I occasionally buy these $29.99 a weekly limit ones. These, uh, can this one here, the $70 one, I don't buy this because this is a bad value. The Super Near Awakening, I've purchased this once, mostly because I need 135 low grade attack stones. I think if you're super hard welling, you can buy that a couple times just to help get your characters up. And I, the $50 for 400 stones is like well food. So this is if you just want evolution stones. I have only bought one of these, it was for Marina. Um, I don't regret buying it for Marina, but it's so expensive. I. I it's so expensive. I mean, unless you pull like the character you really want. If I was building the fire team or if this was like a Lupina offer or Arabelle offer, I might have been tempted uh, because it does save you. If you look here, it does save you some of these, which is the hero growth where you're using these crystals. But the problem is um, these crystals you really want to use for limit break and you should just grind out the stones through the dungeons. And I always buy my daily strengthening hammer. It's pretty good value for a thousand there. Also keep in mind when you purchase these, they don't replenish. I thought you could buy these and they would replenish. I use them as fodder, a huge, huge mistake. Do not do that. Don't forget you can use your star points here, the high grade evolution to go back and, and purchase some of these and try to get lucky. So you see, I got eight dancing, 21 avatar, 14 of the skilly, and that gives me, you know, a little bit extra. One more of these, why not? We got some movie star, hey, 13 Arabelle there and 16 more of that. So that's that's how that works, okay? There are other things you can do with the star points, but I mean, for the moment, that seems to kind of be what I use it for. And of course, log in every day for your attendance. I, I, I didn't expect this video to turn into a tips and tricks and things that I regret doing wrong video, but there you have it. Hopefully this was at least somewhat informative and gave you guys some information. If it was and you learned one thing, consider liking or leaving a comment telling me what the thing you learned that you didn't know was and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to have YouTube tell you when I'm making more videos. I make videos every day. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.